Here we are once again for another Pro Tools tutorial and today we're looking at master faders and some of their uses within the software. So in this mix everything's rooted out of a stereo output pair and I've created a stereo master fader and assigned it to that same output pair. So the most basic thing which the master will allow us to do is to monitor the overall output level and control that level using the master fader. So if I play this mix you can see what the level's doing there and I can pull the level up or down using the fader. You can also see up here that we have a number of inserts. There's actually 10 available on master faders. I'm just showing the first five here. And these inserts allow us to, of course, use plugins. So in this case, I'm using a bit of overall bus compression. But one thing which is important to understand about using plugins on master faders is that master fader inserts are post fade, whereas on audio tracks, auxiliary inputs and so on, all of those inserts are pre fade. So what that means is as we reduce the fader level, if you're using something like compression, the amount of compression is actually going to reduce and reduce as you pull the fader down. So I'll, we'll have a look at that. And so let's just run the mix. You can see it's, it's currently compressing it very lightly. A couple of decibels of gain reduction there. But if I reduce the fader level, you can see that it compresses less and less. If I push it above zero, it'll compress more than it was before. So let's just contrast that with the way the inserts work on audio tracks and we'll use the snare as an example. So you can see that we've got some gain reduction happening here, but if I bring the fader level down on the track, because these inserts are actually pre-fade, even if we bring the level down, you can see that the gain reduction remains uniform. So the reason why master faders operate differently is because you might want to use dither on the master and when you apply dither, you need the level of the dither to remain constant, irrespective of the master fader level itself. So one of the other things that you can use masters for is controlling sub-master levels. So let's just have a look at what I mean by that. In the case of the drums within this session, they're routed through a stereo drum bus. That then comes back on an auxiliary. And if I play this, you can see we've got a decent level coming in there. But let's take an example where maybe I've balanced it correctly, but on occasions, the drum level is just too high and so it's going over zero a little bit. So there's a couple of ways we could deal with that. We could pull down the individual faders. We could even resort to VCAs. But one other thing you can do is create a stereo master fader and assign it not to a physical output, but to that bus. So don't think of masters as being just something which you use on a physical output. Think of it as a trim control for a physical output or a bus within the session. So let's assign that to the drums. You can see here that there's a level indicated in orange and the fact that it's in orange means that the level's gone over by that much, so 4.1 dB, which means if I bring this down by at least 4.1 dB, then we should prevent the auxiliary from clipping. So what this is doing is, this is a bus control for everything that's going through the drum bus. So you can see this affects what's going to the auxiliary. So it's an overall level. So master faders are more versatile than just controlling the mix output itself. In this session, I've got a Q mix set up, which goes out to some headphones. If I open up any of these sends, we'll see the track level for that particular track. But by clicking on this green expand button, you can see that we now have a master level indicator, which is the sum total of everything on this particular bus. And in this session, we're actually clipping one way to resolve that clipping would be to turn down each of these individual send levels whilst trying to maintain the same balance that we previously had, but that might not be very practical. A much more practical way is to create what I've got here, which is a headphone master. And so it's a master fader assigned to the headphone output. When I run this, I can see that it's clipping. So just pull the master down and it will actually prevent the clipping. Now you might think turning the master fader down is just going to be turning down an already clipped output and it's just going to be a quieter version of that distorted output. But that's not actually the case. The Pro Tools mixer actually uses 64-bit summing and in practice this means that you have a massive amount of internal headroom, over 1500 dB. So no matter how much you've actually clipped a bus, a master fader can resolve that clipping. So even if I'd gone over by 100 dB, I could pull the master fader down to stop the clipping and uh, it would completely retain the full resolution of the audio and it would prevent the distortion. So take for example this session which is 24-bit. If I had gone way over on the track levels 
I could quite happily pull the master fader down and actually retain the full 24-bit word length so you're not losing anything and by all means feel free to test this. Pulling down the master fader is mathematically identical to setting the track levels correctly in the first place. So if for whatever reason you had gone a ridiculous amount over on the tracks, it's actually absolutely technically the same pulling the master fader down as it would be if you'd set the track levels the same in the first place. And if you want to get really unnecessarily technical with what a master fader actually does, it's basically adjusting the 32-bit floating point value in the 64-bit summing mixer by adjusting the exponent and leaving the mantissa in place. And on that note, I think it's probably best we leave it there. That's an overview of master faders. I'll see you next time.